Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a fun three tier fun and cake with a film strip sort of effect. I highly, highly, highly recommend using a mud cake, a pound cake, or a butter based cake, not a super sponge cake as I have here. Now, I've made the exception because my relatives who are a little bit older really prefer that Italian super soft sponge. So if you absolutely had to, this is how I guess you would go about it. I have four layers of cake in each tier, but I'm keeping them super duper short. The shorter they are, the more stable it will be. And I've also used dark chocolate ganache along the rim on the outside working as a dam. So this will set really nice and firm. Uh, which means the custard filling that I'm using here is going to be a lot less likely to ooze out of the sides. So continue using that ring of ganache all the way around. I've used a sugar syrup here, uh, touched with a little bit of cherry brandy, and then I'll alternate with a chocolate custard and vanilla custard. Another tip, you do not want to add too much custard as well, so keep those layers nice and thin too. Continue until you have all of your cake sponges layers stacked. For the very last one, I um, kind of add the sugar syrup underneath where the sponge is, rather where the crust is. That just helps to keep the cake a little bit more moist. Apply a chocolate ganache crumb coat all over, nice and thick. You do not want to be using buttercream for this, uh, only because buttercream is a little bit more temperamental with temperature. In a warm climate, the buttercream could soften and becomes a hot mess. Dark chocolate ganache is pretty much the strongest medium you can use, um, especially under fondant. Once it's nice and smooth, refrigerate it for about 20 minutes and then apply your final layer of ganache again. To make it nice and stable, you do want this layer of ganache to be nice and thick. Smooth it out the best as you can and then cut off that top rim. You could use a spatula and just drag it towards the middle, but this makes a much sharper edge for you if you just cut it off. I go around the edges a second time just to raise any lip that might have been pressed down. And then you want to repeat this with a 6 inch and a 4 inch as well. So just to recap, to make it extra stable, you want a ganache rim, ganached crumb coat and final coat, and you want to keep the layers nice and short. For the fondant, I've used Bakehouse fondant in white and just some cornstarch or icing sugar to make sure it doesn't stick to my countertop. You want to roll this out to about three or so millimeters in thickness. As you go and you notice any bubbles, pop them and then just a kind of press out the air with a fondant smoother. I'm being sure to pop them on a sideways motion so that you don't see the hole. Drape it over your cake and then use a fondant smoother to press out any air. Undo the pleats and gently massage the fondant onto your cake. Now this is fantastic because they're only pretty short cakes so this step wouldn't be too hard. I didn't skip any steps here, just sped it up so you can see how quickly you can actually get that done. Give it a good tap of the base with your fondant smoother and then cut off the excess. As you pull away the excess, make sure you do knead that back to softness and have it wrapped in plastic wrap so it doesn't dry out and you can use it. If you've cut a little bit too much at the base, just use your fondant smoother and kind of stretch that fondant back down towards the base. I like to work with two smoothers as I go to create a nice sharp edge and if your cake is becoming sticky, um, you can add a little bit of icing sugar or cornstarch. This will make it a lot easier to work with. Take some more fondant, roll it out nice and thin to about three millimeters again, and then cut down your first film strip. This is an icing sheet. You could also use wafer paper, but icing sheets are better quality and they don't um, wrinkle in the fridge from the moisture. Whereas with wafer paper, you can risk it becoming wrinkly. Stick it to your fondant with a little bit of water, trim down the sides, and then you can let this rest on the counter for about 20 minutes as it's. And then after 20 minutes, you can pick it up and shape it. If you were to do it straight away, it is really limp and flexible, so you might not get the finish you're really looking for. If you let it firm up a bit more, it will stand nice and straight. 
let that set at least overnight if you can and then take the rest of the film strips cut them down and apply them directly onto your cake with some water I like to use a cake board as a base to make sure that it's all nice and straight go over it with a clean dry fondant smoother just to make sure that if there was any air trapped behind it it's been pushed out line up the next strip and repeat For the very last section, I just cut it off where it met with the first edge. And if it doesn't quite butt up, uh, you can take a edible marker with black ink and draw a line where it meets and that way it kind of blends in as if it were the next stage of a photo on the film strip. Here I've taken a really thick dowel and I've centered it right in the middle and I've taken five more little dowels all around that center one. The next step to making this a super stable cake is to add heaps of dowels. So I went with six at the base and five in the middle. Normally I do four and three, but the more dowels you have here, the better it is considering how very soft the cake will be. Repeat again, I just stuck all my tears together with a little bit of ganache and just applying the film strip at the base. Once all the film strips have been applied to your cake, you can add on the little plaque on top. And that is your film strip cake complete. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial and you give it a go with a mud cake or something a bit more stable. If not, it can be done. These are the tips I would recommend for a softer cake. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.